everyone. I'm Mayuri Kango. Uh, I'm a digital practitioner for the last 16 years. Uh, seven years, pre, uh, I was working as a managing director for Performix, which is a digital ad agency. And for the last two years, I've been working as an industry head with Google. What does that mean? That means I help agencies uh, figure out how to use Google products to help their clients' business grow and, of course, grow their own revenue. So when I talk about all of this, you must be thinking I'm like a seasoned digital professional, right? But the fact is, I started my career in a completely different field. As some of you are looking at me, you're thinking, wait, I've seen her somewhere. Oh yes, she's that girl from Gharse Nikalte. Papa kehte, right? I get that all the time. And I did start my career at a very young age, at 17, in Bollywood. So, how did Bollywood happen? Was it a thought out decision? Of course not. I was 17, I wasn't thinking about much. It was actually just a happenstance or a chance that happened. So I come from a culture of theatre. My mother was a renowned theatre actress. Uh, she was a teacher. She was just incredibly accomplished. The super mom, if you can say that. So she had gone to Bombay to pursue her passion, which was acting. And I had gone just before my 12th boards during a Christmas break to meet her. And my hidden agenda was if I can get her, nag her to take me to Linking Road so I can buy shoes. So while that was happening, she took me for a script reading for a movie called Naseem. Uh, the director of which was Mr. Saeed Mirza. As the script reading was happening, he looks at me and he goes, wait, she's my Naseem. I was like, no, that's not happening. I'm a good student. I'm going to be an engineer. I need to study really hard. This is not going to happen for me. So I was like, no, I can't do this. But then I thought about it. Uh, my family has very deep social and political roots in this country. Uh, we believe passionately about the freedom of right, about the freedom of religion, and about secularism. This movie was about Babri Masjid riots, which were very divisive for our country, for the fabric of our country. And I felt I owed it to my family, to my grandparents, and to my country to do this movie just that once. And I did it. And it was supposed to be a one-off. And I was supposed to go back to doing my engineering. They say life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. And that's basically how Bollywood happened to me. As I was waiting for the results of my 12th board, Mahesh Bhatt wanted to offer me the lead role in Papa Kehte and rest, as they say, was history. And soon I decided to choose Bollywood over engineering. My parents encouraged me. They said I must try it out with one small caveat saying no matter what you do, you have to continue your education in one form or the other. So they said you must pursue your degree in arts if you cannot do engineering. At that, and for that, I'm really, really grateful. But at that point of time, I really resented the hell out of them. I mean, imagine you're a 17 year old, you want the glitz and glamour of Bollywood and your parents are nagging you to enroll into Mithibai and do a degree. So obviously I resented it uh, at that time, but I think that was one of the smartest choices my parents made for me. And so that's what happened. Uh, I entered Bollywood and for the next 10 years, I did many different roles, um, became famous, became moderately successful, um, I must say that, however, I was never really satisfied with what I was doing. I was always looking for something else, looking for something more. I felt like it wasn't a satisfying career for me. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it. Of course, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the first few movies a lot. Uh, I enjoyed the travel, the fame, the success. But it always came at a cost, right? And that was the cost for me was my desire for privacy, my desire to be more than just an antiquated female in some drama that I really could not associate with. So at one point of time, I thought to myself, instead of just complaining about the life you have, can you make a life you want or a life you choose? And it wasn't an easy decision. You can't just get up one day and change your life all over. It takes a lot of courage and you're frightened of change. I was. Also, you don't really know what you could do. So I continued this way for about 10 years. And I said at one point of time that, you know, if I want to change my life, it's up to me. The only thing stopping me is me. And I need to take charge of my life, and that's what I decided to do. It really helped me that I had incredible set of friends. I had a family that really supported me no matter what I chose. But I didn't know what the choices were. Eventually, I went to a career counselor. I looked at everything that was available to me, and I decided I knew exactly what I had to do. But the first thing I had to do was quit Bollywood. So in 2005, that's what I did. So while I have really fond memories of Bollywood and everything that I did there, I remember being different. I remember I was always more interested in asking about questions about the business of filmmaking, right? How are films made? How do you budget for them? I used to ask tons of questions to producers and directors. Sometimes they indulged me. Sometimes they answered my questions. Sometimes they told me I asked too many questions and maybe they mocked me. But none of them really deterred me from the fact that 
I wanted to know more about the things related to business and that was actually something that kept coming, coming back to me. So as I thought about what I wanted to do next, I knew that I had to take a path that was of real interest to me and being a business leader or leading a business was something that I always wanted to do. So with the help of my friend and a career counselor, I decided to pursue my MBA in 2005. So I worked really, really hard. I gave my GMAT and my friends and my family really supported me. They proofread my essays, helped me shortlist colleges in the US I could be applying to. And the best part was when I did get that admission along with the scholarship, they acted like I'd landed on the moon, like I was the first woman to have ever done that. And that, that gave me confidence because at that point of time, I really did lack that because I had not been in a college for many, many years. So with that, I decided after many years of Bollywood to quit everything, got on a flight to New York and decided to start the next phase of my life. So was the transition difficult from being an actress to a student? It was incredibly difficult. I was intimidated. I, I, was, uh, I was really, really petrified. I remember for the first uh, six to eight weeks of the, my MBA term, sitting in my class, really being quiet because I was surrounded with people with tremendous amount of work experience. They had so much to contribute and I felt I didn't. And it took a toll on my, uh, on my self-confidence for a little bit till I started realizing that instead of being petrified of change and thinking about how much other people know, I can actually learn from them. So I paid attention. I learned from what everybody else was talking about. And then as time went by and I started getting really good grades, my confidence came back. I also decided to take active steps to build my uh, portfolio, as, this, as you say. I took up internships, I worked full time, I also made sure that I was doing my studies really well. So that kind of helped me gain a little bit of confidence in myself. And so when I landed my first job in a digital advertising agency, I was super thrilled. That was something that I really wanted to do. So my dream has always been to be a CEO of a company. And you know, when somebody asked me uh, a little while ago, where did this dream come from? I didn't really have a clear answer, but I do remember as a child, my father, who was a doctor, but also a union leader, used to talk about uh, you know, all the things that he used to do for workers' rights. And I remember think, asking him, who makes these decisions, dads? And he, he introduced me the concept of boards and CEOs and the kind of influence and the power they can ha have in the lives of different people. And I felt that that's what I wanted to do. That's the kind of person I wanted to become. That was one incident. And the second incident I remember was actually really funny because this has got to do with advertising. I was really young and there used to be this ad that used to come on pawns where there was a girl who used to walk with full confidence into a room, which was a boardroom full of men. She's the only woman in that room and she takes her seat at the head of the table. That was a woman I admired. Her self-confidence, her poise, and that's what who I wanted to be. I just didn't know how. By the, when I started doing my MBA, I started seeing a path to that dream that I had as a child. Sometimes in life, you can see those glimpses of your, the future you really want. You have to grab onto them. You have to hold on to them. And that's what I did. So I knew I had to work twice as hard as everybody else if I wanted to get ahead in my chosen career. And I did that. And was it hard? Were there biases being in a different country? Of course it was. A, I did not have the same background as everybody else. I couldn't have the banter about what college life was like because I didn't have that. Um, I came from a completely different society, a different culture, uh, different skin color. So you do stick out like a sore thumb. But I don't believe I, sh I, I ever that let that get to me. I believe that if I worked extra hard and tried to find something that nobody else found, I'd make a niche for myself. And that's what happened. Eventually, I managed to make a niche for myself and I grew in my profession. I gained the confidence of my colleagues, my manager, and I started doing really, really well in New York and grew through the ranks. So after eight years in New York, uh, I became a mom. I had a, a baby and it was really tough being a mom and working in an advertising agency, the long commute, no support system. And I felt I wasn't doing justice to either of the roles, right? I wasn't able to be a good mom. I wasn't able to be a great uh, advertising professional. I felt I was struggling, but I really didn't know what other options I had. And I knew I could cut back on my work. I could work four days a week or three days a week, but it would come at the cost of my career aspiration, which is a reality for a lot of women. And I wasn't willing to make that sacrifice. At the same time, I didn't want to give up on the quality time I was having with my child, so I didn't know what to do. And then again, as they say, sometimes things happen. I came to India for a visit uh, when my son was about 11 months old, uh, and I got offered a job to actually start a digital agency for the same company I was working in New York uh, for in Gurgaon. It was an incredible opportunity. This was something that I've always wanted to do. This was something that I was looking for, but it just was so intimidating and so scary at this point of time in my life. 
I'd made a name for myself in New York. I had a network of professionals that knew me. Uh, in India, I'd have to start from scratch. I'd have to build my credibility all over again, and not to mention the fact that I was a new mom, and this role would be even more demanding. But sometimes you just have to trust your gut. You have to take that chance on yourself and take that risk because you know that it's taking you to the path that you always wanted to go. And so that's what I did. I packed up, bag, baggage, dog, baby, everything, and I arrived in India. My colleagues, my friends back in New York thought I was insane to take a risk as big as this. But that risk was worth it for me. So coming back to India, my second pivot in 16 years, that transition was actually even tougher, right? Really, really difficult, actually. Because at this point of time, I was joining a company as a leader, and I really didn't have any credentials in India. Every meeting I walked into for everybody, I was that once famous Bollywood actress, and they had no context of what I had done in the last 10 years. I had no credibility as a, as a digital professional. I had to walk into every meeting, I had to walk into office every single day to prove to everybody that I deserved where I was, and I, I actually could do this role, and I could do it well. And it took, took me a lot of time. It took me two years to build that credibility all over again, and I've had many sleepless nights and cried over it, and it, it was worth it because I really think that if you if you believe in yourself if you give yourself a chance and if you kind of take those risks and take big bets and stand by them you'll lose some but you'll definitely win more and that's what happened to me so I spent about eight years leading this company in Publicis and those were the eight most amazing years of my life the learning curve was incredible I worked with some really really interesting people challenging people I learned so much and like I said, I made so many bets as, as a leader of this company. And some of them failed, of course, but a lot more actually paid off. And they got me to where I am today. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. Now I'm at Google, and I enjoy this other side of advertising, where I'm, again, learning a lot of new things. And I think that's the most important part uh, for, pe for you to enjoy your career. You have to be at a point where you're constantly learning. And that's what I feel makes you good at your job and so that's what I'm doing today and I'm really enjoying myself so you must be wondering why I'm sharing this really deeply personal story with you that's because I know change can be intimidating it can be frightening but sometimes you just have to take a risk you have to take a chance on yourself and you have to plow ahead if you want to pursue your dreams I'm sure some of you are at similar crossroads right now it could be in your personal life or in professional life and you don't really know if you should take that chance and take that path because you don't know where it's going to lead you next and the reality of it is most of us make some of our most important life choices between the ages of 17 to 25. And we don't really know the complexity of the choices that we are making. We also don't know what doors they will open for us. We really don't know a lot about the choices that we are making. So what should we do? We should talk to people. We should seek out mentors. We should absolutely get advice from people in fields that we are interested in. We should read a lot because there really is no substitute for knowledge. But after you have done all of that, you've read, you've talked to people, dig deep down uh, within yourself and see if this feels right to you. But also be brutally honest about yourself and your capability. Because, you know, there's always going to be failure no matter what choice you take. You should be okay to work with the failures, to learn from that failures, to be brave and continue on that path. You should have that determination to want that path that badly. Once you have made that choice, I don't think you're always going to get it right. You will fail. Sometimes you might get questioned by other people. In fact, you'll get questioned a lot by a lot of other people. But don't worry about what other people think about you or what they think you should be doing. Because they don't have to live your life. You do. My advice to you and myself always, it's okay to be terrified of change. We all feel that. But we have to learn to trust that inner voice. We have to believe in our gut. And we have to do what we think is right for us. Keep asking questions. Keep learning. Pursue what you really, really love. And don't be afraid of taking a chance on yourself. You will be amazed at what you can achieve if you only learn to say yes to yourself.